Welcome to System-Wide PD4, Ensuring Success in Mathematics. In today's session, we will have an opportunity to reflect on this year's implementation of computational fluency standards that we've learned in System-Wide PD across the year. We will analyze end-of-grade and summative assessment items related to the NBT standards, including place value standards and computational fluency standards. And we'll use this information to make specific plans to prepare our students to show what they know on the EOG tests and K2 summative assessments. Lastly, we will examine strategies to increase achievement on end of year assessments. So now let's begin by examining the APT or Assess, Plan, Teach journey that we took over the past year. Cumberland County began the APT process by examining EOG data from the first two years of implementing our new standard course of study. This data helped us deter to determine our needs as a county. Let's take a very brief look at Cumberland County's data as a whole. One way that I like to look at this data is by examining the gaps between Cumberland County's proficiency scores and the state average. This way, even if one section of the test is more difficult one year, every county would have a slightly lower score and the gap between the county and state average would still be the same. In the first year of implementing our new set of standards, third grade had the biggest gaps in measurement and data and numbers and operations in base 10. In the second year of implementation, there were larger gaps in every domain. The biggest gap, which has doubled since the previous year, was within the NBT standards. After the first year of implementing the new standard course of study, fourth graders in Cumberland County Schools had the largest gaps with the NBT standards. After the second year of implementation, that gap with the NBT standards actually tripled. This right here definitely tells us that we have a need to do something different with that NBT domain. After implementing the new standard course of study at, for one year, fifth grade's two largest gaps were in fractions and the NBT standards. Now, we anticipated fractions because there were huge learning gaps between the old standard course of study and the new one, uh, and we hoped that after the second year of implementation, that gap with fractions would decrease. And the good news is that that fractions gap did decrease. However, the gap between Cumberland County's NBT standards and the state average almost doubled. Again, this told us that we needed to do something different. So Cumberland County Schools developed a plan. We came up with a plan to increase achievement within the NBT domain, which includes computational fluency and place value. Additional resources were provided to schools through resource guides and our YouTube channel. Biweekly assessments were created on SchoolNet for grades 3 through 5. Targeted support was given, and our system-wide PD focused around computational fluency. Once the system-wide PD was facilitated, it was time to teach. Teachers taught strategies to help develop computational fluency rather than focus on rote memorization. In addition, number talks were implemented. Cumberland County Schools has now gone through the entire cycle of APT. We're actually about to come full circle back to assess what, as we get ready for EOG tests and summative assessments. In order to give our students every opportunity to show all that they know on the EOG or end of year K2 assessments, we need to make sure what we are teaching is aligned to the level of these assessments. We also need to make sure that we are using language consistent to that of these assessments. We would be doing our students an immense disservice if they've been learning all year yet are not prepared to exhibit this learning on EOG tests or K2 assessments. In order to determine if our students are ready to show what they know, let's take a look at some released EOG items and K2 summative math assessment items. At this time, pause the video and refer to the sample assessment items in the front of your handout. Take some time to examine the items for your grade level. As a table, discuss the language used in the items and the level of questioning. So for example, think about how is the language in the assessment similar to or different from the language that you use with your students? And then how is the level of questioning similar to or different from the level of questioning you used when teaching the NBT standards? And then be prepared to share this information with the whole group. 
In order to make sure our students are ready to show what they know about the NBT standards, we must make sure they are exposed to the same language and same level of questioning as seen in these summative assessments. At this time, we will pause the video once more for you to discuss this with your table. Discuss what can you do to support students over the next three months leading up to the EOG and K2 summative math assessments. Again, be prepared to share ideas with the whole group. One idea that you may have discussed is the need to practice problem solving or implement an effective problem solving strategy. This was my initial thought as well. When deciding on a problem solving strategy, make sure to select one that helps students dig in and better understand the problem. Let's briefly, since I'm sure you've probably heard this before, take a look at an ineffective strategy versus an effective one. This first strategy I've seen on several websites on the internet. Uh, it's called the cube strategy, and you would use it with any type of math problem. First, you would circle the key numbers, underline the question, and box any math action words. Now, at first I wasn't sure what a math action word was, so I dug a little bit deeper and I found out action words are the same as keywords. So, I would box in all. And now, as a student, I'm ready to solve the problem. Okay, so how many seashells does Billy need to find? Well, 14, 31, in all, well, in all kind of means add, or usually means add, so I'm going to add. So, Billy needs to find 45 seashells. However, that strategy just led me to the wrong answer because I never was focused on reading the problem and deeply understanding the problem. Instead, we need to find strategies that help us or help students really dig into the problem and think about the meaning, help students visualize. One good strategy for this is the stop sign strategy. And I'm sure you've probably seen this strategy before, so I won't go through it right now. There is more information about the stop sign strategy on the CNI Google site. At this time, your coach will share some problem-solving activities to promote reasoning and sense-making rather than focusing on quick tricks that can mislead students.